Lesson 1.5 is solving equations with rational numbers. We're going to do three things today. Solve equations with decimal numbers, solve equations with fractions, and then solve word problems using equations as well. Um, one thing that we always need to keep in mind when we do equations is that there are operations partners, meaning that these things cancel each other out. When you add and subtract, they cancel out. Let's say you have zero to start. If you add five and then subtract five, you're going to be right back at zero. Um, same thing with multiplying and dividing. Let's say you had 1. If you multiplied times 9 and then divided by 9, that would give you 9 divided by 9 would be 1 again. So multiplying and dividing, they cancel each other out. They, they neutralize each other. And that's important as we're going to be doing equations here. For example, we have y minus 17.5 equals 11. So we have subtracting here, and we want to get rid of this 17.5 so we can get the y all by itself. So to neutralize the minus 17.5, we could add 17.5 and then do that to both sides of the equation. So we would be just left with y minus 0, or just we could just leave y there. And then that equals 11 plus 17.5. That would give you 28.5. So that would be our answer for that. Same thing with this one then. We have t divided by 7.5 equals 4. So if we want to get t all by itself, we would have to do the partner of the division, or the one that neutralizes division, which would be multiplication. So we would multiply 7.5 here times t, and then multiply 4 times 7.5. So 7.5t divided by 7.5 would just be 1t, or just t, and that would equal 4 times 7.5, which should be 30. And it is. So t equals 30. Let's do it for fractions now. We have x plus 1 eighth equals 9 sixteenth. So the opposite of adding would be subtracting 1 eighth from both sides. So we're subtracting 1 eighth from both sides here. So then if we're going to solve this, then we have x on one side. Then we could take the 1 eighth and subtract it from the 9 sixteenths. We need to find a common denominator now. Um, 8 goes into 16 twice, so we multiply both of these numbers times 2. So that would give us 9 over 16 minus 2 over 16. And then if we subtract, that will give us 7 over 16 for an answer. So x equals 7 over 16. It's always important to write it out like that. We have 3 fifths times w equals 3 over 16. So we're multiplying 3 fifths times w, and we have 3 over 16 over here. So if we're going to be getting rid of this multiplication, we would have to divide by 3 fifths on both sides. So we do dividing by, and then 3 fifths. But remember, we, when we divide fractions, we need to multiply times the reciprocal. So we need to turn 3 fifths into 5 over 3. So 3 over 16, and now we're multiplying times the reciprocal, so times, and then 5 over 3. If we're going to do any crossing out, we can cross these 3's out because they cancel each other out. And that would leave us with the fraction w equals, w equals then, 5 over 16. So that would be our answer for W. Let's look at a word problem then. So Sully has agreed to paint three different houses. If he knows that he can paint two-fifths of a house in one day, how many days will it take him to paint all three houses? Some people mistakenly uh, multiply two-fifths times three in this one. And the, the big trick for me that I do is always turn, whenever I have a fraction, I turn it into a whole number to make it easier for me. If this was a two, if Sully can paint two houses one day, it would take him about a day and a half, so you do 3 divided by 2, which would give you 1.5. So same thing here. Even though it's a fraction, you're still needing to divide by this fraction to get your answer. So Sully can paint three houses. It takes him two-fifths of a day to paint one, so you'd be divide by two-fifths, and that'll tell you how many days it's going to take. So if we're dividing here, we're going to be multiplying times the reciprocal, so it'd be 3 times, and when we switch the 2 and the 5, it be 5 over 2. So we're going to make this 3 over 1, and now we can multiply. 3 times 5 is 15, 2 times 1 is 2, 
And if we're going to simplify this then, 2 goes into 15 7 times. 2 times 7 is 14, so we have 1 left over. So it would be 7 and 1. Keep that 2 as a denominator. 7 and 1 half would be our answer.